Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to be with you people at this time. We are going to talk about the RM4 T32 Schneider Relay. It is a phase voltage failure, phase sequence failure, and a voltage failure relay. This relay is very critical in your installation to ensure that you do not have a reverse voltage going into your system. It becomes critical when you have a relay such as this in a circuit because without a relay such as this, you could have a conveyor belt going backwards. Imagine Coca-Cola from its production line that goes to packaging. Having this conveyor belt going backwards, that means you are going to have bottles moving from packaging back to production line. Imagine if you have your extractor fan that is supposed to extract air from a critical installation working now as a blower fan. Imagine if you have a blower that is supposed to work as a blower becoming an extractor fan. These are all the effects or the outcomes that can happen if you have a phase reversal in your system. This cannot, this is a cost that is too high for any industrial setup to carry. Therefore, it becomes very necessary to have a device like this phase failure relay that we're going to deal with today. Now, let's go right down into the. This is our, our circuit diagram. As you can see, this is the relay, the phase sequence phase failure relay. This is the supply. As you can see three-phase supply coming in at this end, looped with line one, looped to 18. As you can see, this is terminal 18. And then the output on terminal uh, 15 is taken to the relay. You can see here, terminal one on the relay and terminal two on the relay, which is this. This is our terminal one. Terminal 2 and Terminal 1 on the relay looped here and then we have on the other side of the relay we have Terminal 3 which is a normally open terminal which is here and that goes to one leg of the load which is a uh, cutting machine in this case. This is our cutting machine. And then the other leg of the cutting machine connects to the neutral terminal which also is shorted to the uh, terminal 7 of the coil, which is terminal 7, which is here. This is terminal 7. That's the terminal 7. So we are ready to roll. If you look at this relay now, you see that it has a greater than you set deep switch that controls the upper threshold voltage and the lower threshold voltage. That means you are saying that this relay should conduct only when the voltage is between the lower threshold and the upper voltage, or upper threshold voltage. That means you can say this relay should only conduct when the summation, the vector sum of the supply voltages is between 360 and, 3 and 420. That means the upper threshold, which is greater than you, greater than you, you set it here by turning this clockwise, or rather anti-clockwise, you increase, and clockwise you decrease. Like here now, we have set it at, uh, we have set it at 420, as our upper threshold, and we have also set this, this also increases by turning it clockwise, this increases by turning it anti-clockwise, while the lower threshold increases by turning it clockwise. So we set the, lower threshold at 360 and the upper threshold at 420. Any voltage that is below 360 or above 420, this relay will not conduct an output to control either the ATS or whatever it is that releases power supply into the building. In this particular case, though we are, we are under using this relay, it's supposed to be for three phase uh, loads. But in this case, just to demonstrate, for convenience, to demonstrate its function, we are using it to uh, control this relay, which then switches on the cutting machine. So for the purpose of this uh, uh, 
experiment or for the purpose of this video, um, let's look, let's just consider it as being okay that we're using it for a single phase uh, load, which in this case, like I said before, is a cutting machine. You can use this for three phase load. The output of this uh, conducting terminals, 18 to 15, can be used to control a contactor which can release three phase power supply to a motor of several thousands of or several thousand watts. You know, as you know, relays are not meant to, they just help to open and close the actual circuits that the voltages or supply voltages pass through. So as soon as you have three phase that is that ranges between 360 and 420 coming here, that is three phase that their summation, their vector summation is between 420 and 360. By the way, vector summation of voltages is not the regular summation. Like a single phase voltage can be 220 or 230. It does not mean that when you want to sum uh, two line voltages like line 1 and line 2, which are each 230, 230, that is going to be 460. That is a summation that is directional. So you are going to take the resultant or effective common uh, direction for both of them. That is why the sum of 230 and 230 in line 1 and line 2 cannot be 460. That's why you have stuff like 360 or 420. Even where you have 230 volts by 230 volts as line 1 and line 2, you could still have the, uh, you could still have, uh, the vector sum as 420, like we have here. So we'll, in this case, we might decide to set 420 as our upper threshold and 360 as our lower threshold, so that voltages within this range is only what will be allowed into the building or into the uh, electrical system. If, for instance, if you have equipment that cannot tolerate anything less than 360 and cannot, or anything above 420, this is the range you should use. You may also decide that uh, your equipment cannot take anything above 400. You can also set this threshold, this upper threshold, as it pleases you. So once these parameters are met and the phase sequence are in order, as in red, yellow, and blue is in, you know, in order, and uh, the voltages are right, the upper and lower limits are there, this relay will conduct. And this voltage, L1, will be available at terminal 18. And it's conducted to terminal 15. And then it's thereafter available at terminal 2 of the coil of the AP relay and terminal 1 of the same relay. And this, this switch, as you can see, moves to NO. And this conducts through this to 3. And from 3, this voltage is available at one leg of the motor or the cutting machine. And we take the other leg, goes to the neutral, and closes in back to terminal 7. And then, once this is done, this coil is energized, and as I said before, this moves to here, this moves to here. And this, the moment you press this switch, the moment you close this switch, this motor will work. The moment you close this switch, this light will come on, like we have now. Let us particularize this. This is the motor. So let's see. This is the motor. And if for any reason any of these phases fail. Automatically, there will be no conduction. Let us take, for instance, now. Supposing, let's just suppose, I will do this. This is dangerous, but I will do it. It's life. Let's just suppose that in the course of your supply, one of the phases goes off. Let's say L3 goes off. Oh, well, let's practicalize what will happen. See, there's a phase. You can see the phase alarm is there, and this motor will not work again. Nothing. So this is why it is very critical that 
a device like this should be in place. And then the power supply returns again to normal. The alarms are cleared and everything starts working as normal. Devices like this are very, very important in, a, in an electrical uh, installation where you have uh, blowers, extractor fans, even industrial conveyor belts which rotate or turn move products from one side, from left side to the right in order for production line to give certain outputs. You need to have a certain direction of rotation of the conveyor belt or the feed line to machines that either cut like in the leather factory where uh, a, machine, a certain machine need to cut leather and move it as, it, as, the, as this conveyor belt is bringing it forward, the cutting is slicing it. If you don't have this kind of control, this phase sequence or phase uh, sequence control uh, and uh, over voltage and all this kind of uh, parameters co corrected or controlled, you have a situation whereby the conveyor belt can suddenly, anytime the phase changes, let's say red line becomes blue line, uh, yellow line, yellow line becomes blue line, automatically the conveyor belt will start going in the reverse direction. That means uh, Coca-Cola that is rolling from production to packaging, the, 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 the conveyor belt will roll backwards and stuff will now have to move from conveyor belt, from packaging back into production line. Or the scissors, giant industrial scissors that is cutting leather that is moving from left to right. The leather belt, the, the, the belts or the conveyor table that is carrying, bringing the leather that is being cut can roll backwards. That means from cutting back to where it's coming to. Uh, your extractor fan, for instance, will automatically become a blower. Your blower will become an extractor fan. Things will, three phase uh, machines in your system are bound to work in the wrong direction and in the wrong ways. And consequently, this will be at a great loss to the establishment. That is why devices like this are very, very critical in an installation, especially where you have multi phase. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you liked, enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.